Within the past few minutes, we've heard that the Prime Minister of Sweden, Mr. Olaf Palmer, has been assassinated. Few facts have been released about the circumstances of the Swedish Prime Minister's assassination when someone shot him on a street corner in the center of Stockholm. After 34 years, more than 10,000 interviews and 134 murder confessions, the assassination of the Swedish Prime Minister, Olaf Palmer, has been closed. But has it been solved? But let's start from the beginning. Sven Olof Joachim Palmer was a politician and statesman that served as the Prime Minister of Sweden between the years 1969 to 1976 and 1983 to 1986. Palmer was sometimes known to go out without a security detail, just to have a semblance of normal life, and the cold night of February 28, 1986 was one such night. The Prime Minister was asked to go to the Grand Cinema in Stockholm with his wife on very short notice. His wife, Lisbeth Palmer, had wanted to see the Swedish comedy Brodena Mozart, and she discussed her plans with her son, Morten Palmer. But by the time Palmer knew of the plans, he'd already dismissed his personal bodyguard protection for the day. It was recounted that by 8.30pm, the Palmers had left their house for the cinema without any guards and they met Morton and his girlfriend outside the cinema around 9 o'clock. After the movie, the two couples waited outside the cinema for a while, but went their separate ways at around 11.15. The Prime Minister and his wife headed south on the west side of Sphere Vagan. When they got to the Adolf Frederick Church, they crossed the east side of the street. Reports say that they stopped for a moment to look at something in a shop window, and as they continued on their way at exactly 11.21, a man appeared from behind and shot the Prime Minister at point-blank range. The perpetrator also fired a second shot at Mrs. Palmer before jogging down Tunnelgaten Street and continuing to David Bargarisgata Street, where he was last seen. Immediately after the shooting, a witness called Sweden's emergency number, but the call was misdirected. Later on, a taxi switchboard operator called the police to say that one of its drivers had reported seeing someone being shot. A few seconds later, a police patrol vehicle arrives on the scene. Coincidentally, an ambulance that just happened to be in the vicinity was flagged down to help the gunshot victims. Palmer and his wife were taken to Sabbathsburg Hospital, where it was discovered that Mrs. Palmer had suffered a minor graze to her back from the gunshot. But Wolof, on arriving to the hospital, was pronounced dead. The police investigation afterwards then became a web of unsolved mysteries. Who killed the Prime Minister? What was their motive? What weapon was used? The gun fired was identified as a .357 Magnum revolver, but that was the only fortune that the case would have. Regrettably, since the weapon does not automatically object cases, there were no cases to recover for use in ballistic examination. This sunk the mystery into a deeper darkness. Throughout the investigation, the Swedish police test fired over 500 Magnum revolvers, but had no luck. They focused on tracking down 10 Magnum revolvers that were stolen at the time of the murder. The police found 9 of the revolvers, but the last one was still missing. It had been stolen from Arna Suksdorf, a Swedish film producer in Stockholm. However, the person who stole the weapon claimed that he had lent a gun of the same type to a Krista Pettersson just two months before the assassination. As the investigation went on, many witnesses came to the police to describe the killer as a man between 30 and 50 years of age, wearing a dark jacket or coat, and about 180 to 185 centimeters tall. Some witnesses claimed that the killer walked with a limp, while others described the killer's movements as smooth, efficient, and powerful. Interestingly, these opposing witness reports didn't start trickling in until Krista Peterson was arrested, and this was almost three years after the Prime Minister had been assassinated. Peterson was a criminal, a drug user, and an alcoholic who had been in prison for manslaughter, who was brought in for questioning and was picked out of a lineup by Mrs. Palmer as her husband's killer. In 1989, he was tried and convicted of killing the Prime Minister and was sentenced to life in prison. Soon after, an appeals court overturned the case, and in 
and acquitted Pettersson. Pettersson's appeal pulled through because one, the prosecutor failed to present a murder weapon, and two, there were doubts about the validity of Mrs. Palmer's testimony. With the case against Pettersson closed, the questions remained. Who killed the Prime Minister? What was their motive? And where is the murder weapon? Another suspect, Victor Gunnarsson, a Swedish extremist, was also arrested for Palmer's murder. But the case against him weakened since he was placed at the scene of the crime by just one eyewitness on a street that is supposed to be one of Sweden's busiest streets and therefore wasn't prosecuted. After Gunnarsson's release, he was surveyed for a period of time, and even though he wasn't convicted of the crime, he suffered so much harassment, he migrated to the US. In December 1993, Gunnarsson was found dead in Blue Ridge Mountains, 68 miles from his apartment in Salisbury, North Carolina. His death brought up many questions. Could a foreign government have killed Palmer then killed Gunnarsson eight years later to cover up the crime. With the strenuously long time the investigation was taking, the case became a magnet for several conspiracy theories. In January 2011, Focus, a German magazine, claimed that they had found official German interrogation records, along with connections from another investigation in 2008, showing that the assassination was carried out by a Yugoslavian security service operative. However, this is obviously not being confirmed. Anyway, back to the case. The Swedish police kept on investigating by extending the Swedish law for murder investigations to beyond 25 years so they could keep the case open. However, it wasn't until 34 years after the Prime Minister's assassination that the Swedish police announced their primary suspect. On June 10th, 2020, the Swedish police revealed that their main suspect was not a foreign agent, nor a shadowy far-right cabal, but a graphic designer who worked at an insurance company. Stieg Engström was 52 years old at the time of the shooting. During the initial murder investigation, he came forward to the police just after the incident happened in 1986, claiming to be the first on the scene and that he had attempted to resuscitate the Prime Minister. At first, Engström was not a primary suspect, but after the interviews and other materials were re-examined, it was discovered that there were a lot of holes in Engstrom's eyewitness account. According to the investigative lead, Hans Melander, no one saw anyone resembling Engstrom in the role he described himself playing, and he concluded that Engstrom's story doesn't hang together. In fact, Engstrom had been under their noses the whole time. He had come forward as a witness on the night of the murder, he had granted interviews to the media and even criticized the police investigation. But after three decades, the prosecutor said that there was reasonable evidence that Engstrom was the killer. Engstrom was a political opponent of Palmer. He was a former military man and knew a lot about weapons. To add to his record, Engstrom had long financial problems and a growing problem with alcohol and he died in the year 2000 when he committed suicide. According to the prosecutor, Stig Engstrom is the Prime Minister's killer, but because he's dead, no charges can be brought against him, and so the investigation has been closed. But even after naming Engstrom as the culprit, the murder weapon has never been found, and no new forensic evidence has been uncovered to prove that he did it. However, with Engstrom's contradicting statements and how his versions didn't add up, he was tagged Palmer's killer. According to the lead investigator, he acted how we would believe the murderer would have acted, and right from the beginning of the investigation, almost everything went wrong. A member of the committee scrutinizing the police investigation recounted that the crime scene wasn't fenced off from the public, the alarm came late, and that there was chaos in the situation room, and reports were not properly documented. It's been three decades since the mysterious murder of Olof Palmer, and while the Swedish police have seemingly named a culprit, the case remains unsolved. It seems as if the person who shot the Prime Minister will never be found. Until next time.